these things that I started noticing when I was working with entrepreneurs and uh, was the level of productivity, especially since I work or I've been working with now. Now we work with multimillion dollar brands, but um, especially when I started, I was in a place where I was working with a lot of new entrepreneurs. And one of the biggest challenges that I, that I saw that they faced was being productive. And, you know, sometimes, you know, we come up with time. We, you know, we don't have time to do this or we can't fit this in our schedule. Or sometimes you put things in your schedule, but you don't respect it. Like you're going to go through all of these phases if you haven't already, depending on where you're at in your business. Right? I know some of us may be in different places, but you understand, you know, you go from I don't have time to. All right, I'm gonna put it in my schedule, but you don't do it to put it in your schedule, but you're not respecting your schedule to okay. When you really start getting serious, like it's in my schedule, and I'm gonna really like follow it for the most part, right? And none of us are 100 percent but um, but I created this planner that is um that's really that's really made for entrepreneurs to be productive. And this is not like a typical, a typical planner, like we ask questions. So I'm gonna tell you what the planner is, and then I'm gonna share with you specifically how to turn your book into into a coaching program so you can go ahead and you can multiply your revenue and monetize monetize your knowledge in a different way what i decided to do was i said okay let me create a course and i think i had when i launched the course it might have been something low it might have been like 600 bucks or something like that for the course right so i said okay now i turned a 40 really the same information I took a $40 book, a $45 book, and I turned it into a $600 course. And, the only, and guess what's the only thing I did that was different? The only thing I did different was I just explained everything in the book and how to do it and gave examples. <laughs> that, that, was, that, that was literally the only thing that I did. I had a module. Remember I told you about the targets? Mm -hmm. I had a module on how to how to how to come up with targets and what projects you want to you want to you want to focus on. How to think about that? How to think through that? Remember priorities? How do you think through your priorities? I had a module on that. I had a module on how to know who to contact, how to contact, when to contact, day and night, email, follow-ups, how to organize your inbox to make sure you the right people are contacting you back. I had a whole module on how to avoid distractions, right? I had a whole I had modules on everything that was inside this book. And instantly like that. I turned something from $40, $45 into $600 just like that. And people were buying it. It's all about the value that you provide. like, And that's the biggest thing. So don't get caught up in the prices. The prices are irrelevant. It's more about the value that you provide. And anytime I create products or services, and I'm sure Sugar Ray has the same idea, is that anytime you create anything, you should give people multiple times the value. I like to look at a 10x result from what you're reading from me or what you're buying from me. You know what I'm saying? I like to give you multiple times the result, right? So number one, the first thing you need to do when you have a book and you want to create a program or you want to create a course, a coaching program or a course for what you have, the first thing you got to do is you want to turn your chapters into a curriculum. Write that down. Turn your chapters into a curriculum. So Terrell, what do you mean specifically is that remember, especially if you have a nonfiction book, there's an objective that there's, an, there's a reason why you wrote this book. Usually, you if you when you write a book, you're trying to get people to a specific outcome, right? So if you're getting people to a specific outcome, it's fair to say that the, the way that you constructed the chapter is, is probably teaching people more so they can get closer to that outcome, right? Mm -hmm. So if that's how you constructed the book, why won't you construct your coaching curriculum that way? Think about it. If they need to know now, make sure that it's in the same order, you know, make sure that it's in, it's in order, right? In terms of what they need to know, but create the create your curriculum that way. So if you got, you know, let's say 12 chapters or 13 chapters in a book, that's all sh showing people how to get into the career they want, or, you know, how to be an author or how to be a speaker or, you know, how to, how to overcome trauma, whatever your topic is. And you wrote a book on it. Well, if you, if you're, when you have a first thing you got to do is, OK, what am I going to teach people? But you already have the blueprint to your course because you already wrote it. So that's the first thing you want to do is you want to be able to turn in. You want to be able to, to turn in. intuitively. When I started, I kind of knew that already because I'm like, well, if people are asking me questions and they, and they bought the book for me, I, I don't see why they wouldn't want to watch the course. Why wouldn't they want to hear from the author me actually teaching and training it if they're willing to read the book? create a live masterclass. So once I know what I'm going to teach, which could literally be, you know, you writing it out. So you're like, okay, cool. If I get, if I, if I'm helping anybody, I know this is my curriculum, but launch a live masterclass, like create a live masterclass. Why? For a couple reasons. One, you're going to 
you're really going to um, be able to gauge the interest of people, right? Because you sometimes people just buy books to support, like let's be real, right? But you get a chance to really gauge the interest that you had, you know, of it. Um, and then two, when you have a masterclass, you get that live interaction, you get real questions, and you get the opportunity to to really um, bring to life your words that are on a book. I mean, literally, if you really wanted to, you could just open the book and go chapter by chapter, not read it, but read the tap, tap chapter of the title and you could kind of use the book as like a blueprint. Number three, to turn it into a pro, a coaching program, what we just talked about is good enough for a course. Let me Now let's talk about a coaching program. If you're going to do a coaching program, there needs to be some type of coaching element to it, some type of live element. So I would, I would launch... I would add weekly coaching, right? This is like you're creating an offer. I would add weekly coaching to my program. So remember, people are gonna have questions. So you do you could do your live masterclass, you save it, it's recorded, you add it as part of your package. This is part of what you know that's uh, um Sugar Ray and I were talking about earlier in terms of having and being able to charge more, right? Depending on what you're adding to the program and the value that people are getting, you can charge more. So you got your master class, but now you maybe you do live weekly coachings where you do Q&A and you just answer questions. You answer questions about the modules. You can teach them additional elements of what's inside of your book. And I would add that as part of the weekly coaching. These are all things that I didn't know when I first started. I mean, when I started, it was like I didn't even have a master class. I was just like, I got to what well, I created the course first. But then after I had the master class, I didn't even do. The coaching element to it until I started realizing that okay, people they kind of need something ongoing because people lose motivation, right? People want to leave their job, so that I'm like, okay, I need to do something weekly <laughs> to really help start helping people. Complementary resources. So when you're creating a program, you want to create, you want to also have your resources as meaning uh, in addition to. So you might have worksheets, you may have. Um, you may add a Facebook group to it. You might add one-on-one -on -one coaching or you might add a group to it. I mean, skies is the limit when you're creating a coaching program. I remember I had a, um, I had a client who, um, who he had a dating, like a relationship program, right? Where it's like, you know, if you're on the, if your marriage is shaky, I'm going to show you how to rekindle it, right? And, and make it strong again. So one of the things he added to his offer was uh, a free night at a luxury hotel. There's no limit to what you can do. The only limit is your mind. Because guess what? If they're paying him five grand, does he have does he have the budget to be able to use a portion of that to put them in a hotel and create a, an experience that they're going to remember for the rest of their life? And they're going to go and they're going to brag to other people about. That's the difference when you're creating a coaching program is that you can create experiences people talk about, people share. You're, you're creating memories. You're creating um, you know, you're, you're allowing people to live a certain type of lifestyle because there's more accountability. You can answer their questions. You can work with them on an ongoing basis. I mean, there's just so many benefits when you when you when you add this coaching element to it, right? So you give them complimentary resources. Number five is you pick your price. Pick your price. I talked about price earlier, but you can't let your price paralyze you. Don't let it paralyze you because you're not sure. Well, what are other people charging? I want you to do your research 100%. So, you know, whatever, let's say if you got a relationship book, well, look at other people. You know, you're not the only person in the world that's teaching relationships. Why don't you see who else is training and teaching relationships? Look at their prices, but also at the same time, look at what you're willing to, what you're willing to do, um, how much you're willing to add um, in terms of like um, your program, like resources you're willing to add. What's the outcome? of um of people finding the you know the right um you know the right uh um the the right partner or the right spouse because depending on who your ideal client is that's going to depend on your price i mean there's so many things that depend on price yes one is the resources but another thing could be well i can have this book and let's say if i gave this book and i and i gave this course to two different types of people same book, same course, but I can charge completely two separate prices, right? Let's say one person, I charge $600 for the book um, in a course, and then I charge another person $6,000 for the same book or the same course. So on the surface, you might say, hold up, Terrell, that don't make sense. How does that, how could you sell the same information 
to two different people and charge two different prices and they'd be okay with it. How, how does that work? <laughs> right? Well, you can charge different prices depending on who your ideal client is. Because remember what I said, it's about the value that they get from what you have. So let's say I turn this time management, this productivity and time management book and, and course, and I sell it to your average person. So the time management for an average person, being productive for an average person, 600 bucks sounds about good. I'll enroll in it. Makes sense. I'll save some time in my life and I'll be more productive. Now, let's use that. Now, let's take the same information that we have in our in our program. And now we sell it to a surgeon. We sell it to a brain surgeon or we sell it to a heart surgeon. Right. And maybe 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 they follow the tools within my, my program. And maybe they they save an extra five hours a week. They save an extra five hours a week, which means that they can do, let's say they're able to do three more surgeries, three more brain surgeries or, or three more heart heart. Uh, yeah, get three more patients. Maybe that maybe that equates to their bottom line of their business. Let's say an extra one hundred thousand. They would happily pay me six thousand dollars all day. For that information to say to so they can be able to get more surgeries in to make 100k does that make sense so that's why you really got to know the game of business but when you create a program it just creates so much more value that you can really give people and you could charge so much more you'll be hard pressed to charge six grand for a book but if you have a program that you create and you give it to the right audience that makes you you can definitely generate more revenue all right so that's number six and then last but not i mean that's number five and then last but not least, number six, and this is the cherry on top, is you got to have your confidence. You got to have confidence. You know, regardless of the numbers and everything, that doesn't even matter if you don't come to the game with confidence. You got to realize that if you are confident enough to write a book, you're confident enough to teach what's in the book, hands down. And if you need to get more confident doing it, that's why you got to be you got to do things like what you see Sugar Ray doing or you see me doing or is is go out, train, teach this stuff, go live on your own platform, go in and teach and train what's in a book. You need to be teaching and training on it every day. Get comfortable talking about it. Get comfortable giving examples about it. Get comfortable sharing personal life stories um, about it. Get comfortable just sharing what's in the book. Because you'll get comfortable actually talking and sharing what you have within it. So when you create your program and you create your course, you know, you're 100% you're comfortable with the information that you're giving people.